Look at this cute cup my friend Ashley got me. Hi guys, welcome to another video. I'm really sorry for disappearing for a couple months, just didn't have the motivation to film anything, but that's all right because today I am back with this three-in-one pattern that teaches you how you can make these very adorable mushroom frog and ice cream lipstick or lighter holders you can use them for anything that you'd like if you're wondering how they work you just hang this part up of anything that you'd like and then you lift up the head and then you have your little chapstick here that it keeps it nice and protected so that you don't lose it these are all my patterns and my designs so if you use this tutorial i would very much appreciate if you could give me credit these are my socials if you want to tag me i know i'm not as active as i used to be but it's okay i'm trying to bounce back here okay just like bear with me these patterns are very beginner friendly and i've tried to like explain it really slowly and really concisely so that if like this is your very first crochet project then you're able to make it and please consider subscribing if you like this video i'm trying to be more active on here and upload other types of videos as well not just crochet tutorials but crochet vlogs and just the little projects that i make along the month i'll try to show them on here as well so yeah as always if you have any feedback or any questions please leave them in the comments down below and let's get on to the tutorial starting with the frog design you're gonna need a 2.5 millimeter hook you could also go up to a three but i prefer using my 2.5 millimeter and then you also need some yarn that corresponds to the size of the hook that you're using you're gonna need a pair of scissors and then for the eyes of the frog you could use safety eyes but i didn't have any instead i have these that are they're kind of like buttons that you can glue on and these are five millimeters and then you're gonna need the object that you want to put inside of your little holder or something that is like roughly the same size and that's because it's just easier to measure as you go so i have a little lip balm here and a little lighter for comparison and then you're also going to need a ruler because i measure the chain of this and i don't actually like count the stitches i just go off by measurements and then a darning needle to weave in any loose ends and also for the little smile of the frog you're gonna need scrap yarn black scrap yarn and also if you're gluing on your eyes then you obviously need glue i forgot to mention that you're also going to be needing some stitch markers but these are not necessary you could always just use another color of yarn like a scrap piece of yarn that is another color to mark your stitches or a bobby pin a hair clip just really something that marks the end of your row so that you know what row you're working on for this project for all of them actually you need to know how to make a magic circle and i'm gonna show you how i make mine the chain two method also works here but i recommend that if you don't know how to make it you just bite the bullet and learn it because it's a really helpful skill and i understand that it could be a little bit difficult at first but then once you practice you get a hang of it so basically how i like to make my magic circles is i grab the tail end of my yarn with my thumb and my ring finger and then i wrap my yarn around my pointer finger and my middle finger i wrap it once and then i make a little x on this side of my hand so on this side it's just two lines of yarn and then i like to grab this with my pinky just like this kind of like pushing against against my ring finger so you basically have these two lines right here so you're gonna take your hook go under that first yarn and then you're gonna grab the second yarn right here and then you want to twist your hook so that it doesn't let go of it and then go and grab your working yarn this is the yarn that i'm holding with my pinky that's attached to my ball of yarn so you want to go under this to grab it and then make a chain and this is your magic circle or magic ring as some like to call it now we're going to be making single crochets into our magic circle so to do that put your hook through the loop you can see how these two yarns are over my hook one of them is the tail and then one of them is just the yarn from the magic circle 
and then just grab your working yarn and pull it through the magic circle and now you have two loops on your hook yarn over and pull through two and that's basically a single crochet so we're gonna put six of these single crochets into the magic circle so i just put in one i'm gonna show you once again put your hook into the circle grab your yarn and pull up a loop now you have two loops on your hook yarn over and pull through two we've done two so far i'm gonna just go ahead and do four more off camera and then i'll meet you back just did my sixth stitch and if you're curious on how to count them you can count them from here so one two three four five and six but i like to mark the last stitch so i'm gonna grab my stitch marker i'm gonna put it through this last stitch right here like this and now we can go ahead and pull our magic circle tight which how you do it is just you pull on this tail and then it closes the magic circle now we're gonna get started on our second row and so we're working in rounds we're going in like a little spiral so now this second round we're gonna do increases um, single crochet increases all along so this right here we had six stitches right so go ahead and find that very first stitch don't accidentally crochet into the chain that we did here but rather the first stitch is this v looking thing right there so put your hook into that first stitch right there it might be a little tight but just push through and then now we're gonna make a single crochet so yarn over pull up a loop two loops on your hook yarn over and pull through two and then now to make an increase you go back into that very same stitch that you were working in and then you make another single crochet and that's basically an increase so this is gonna bring our stitch count from 6 to 12 so for the second row you're doing increases into all of these stitches and your total stitch count is gonna be 12 so just to show you again go into your next stitch right here make a single crochet then go back into that same stitch and make another single crochet I've reached this last stitch where my stitch marker is so I'm just gonna take it out and I'm gonna do my increases into this very last stitch and then since the stitch marker leaves a little gap I kind of like just push my stitches down and then I grab my stitch marker again and i place it in this very last stitch like that and this is the end of row two so as i've said before your total stitch count for this row should be 12 stitches and how you count oops how you count your stitches start from this very last stitch one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve i didn't do a very good job of demonstrating how to count them but it should give you like a general idea so now we're gonna move on to round three for round three you're gonna notice an alternating pattern between single crochets and increases so find your next stitch and put your hook through it and we're just gonna make a single crochet in this stitch but then in the next one we're gonna do an increase so that's putting two single crochets into the same stitch so that's one going back into that same stitch making another one and then again we're done it we're gonna do one single crochet and then the one after it is an increase so it's just like a repeating pattern that you do all throughout and your total stitch count at the end of this row is going to be 18 stitches so one single crochet then one increase repeat it until the end of this row and then the row is gonna end on an increase and that's how you know if you're doing like the stitch count correctly so now this is kind of my base for the little lipstick holder as you can see here this is like the little flat part and I have my lip balm here 
and I just want to make sure that the circle is a little bit bigger than the actual lip balm so that it's easier to take it out and put it back in uh, if yours doesn't fit the size that you want you can go ahead and do another round of increases and how you do that is you're gonna do two single crochets and then one increase two single crochets one increase that's how you adjust the size but i don't recommend going over more than that because then i feel like it's going to be too big and i also think that lipstick sizes are rather universal so yeah just make sure that the base is a little bit bigger than your lipstick and mine is so now we're done with the increases and we're gonna move on to the next round so for this next round i'm actually gonna just be crocheting into the back loops because i kind of want this part to be flat so from now on we're just gonna be doing single crochets all around so you don't have to worry about counting or anything but for this round specifically for round four i'm gonna be crocheting into the back loops so when you look at the stitch right here the v stitch you see that there is a loop that is facing you that is closest to you and then a loop that is away from you or the farthest from you so the one that is facing you and is close to you that's called the front loop and then the other one is called the back loop so we're going to be crocheting into the back loops so i'm gonna grab my hook go into this stitch right here and only grab this back loop right here and then i'm just gonna make a single crochet and i'm gonna be repeating this only for this round so again go into that back loop yarn over and make a single crochet for this last stitch i take out my stitch marker i go into the back loop right here make a single crochet Put the stitch marker back on this last loop now if you look at it here there's kind of like this line that's here and you see how this side is flat so that's basically why we did this but now from row 5 to row 15 you're just gonna do single crochets all around have the item that you want to put into the holder nearby and i want to make this so that it covers almost all of this until like i have about like i want to say like a centimeter left look at this one here you can see that the lipstick doesn't fit all the way into the little holder and that's just because it's easier to grab it like this so for me to be able to cover like almost all of this lipstick i have to do 10 rows of just single crochets so it's good to have the item that you want to put in nearby so that you can measure as you go i'm just going to be doing single crochets normally so just find your next stitch go into it not working through the back loops anymore we're going through both of the loops so yeah just continue doing this until you cover most of the length of the item that you want to place into the little holder I've just done 15 rows and I am happy with the length that it is at right now. So now I'm not going to fasten this off. I'm just going to take my stitch marker out. And this is actually where we're going to start chaining to make like the little hanging part. So instead of going to the next stitches, all you have to do is you start making a chain. So just make a chain as you would and i don't know how many to make i go off of the length of it like i measure the length of it with a ruler and i like to go anywhere between 20 to 25 centimeters i'm not sure how many that is in inches i'll have it on the screen but yeah just chain and then measure as you go so that you can reach your desired length so i just finished chaining and when you measure it it's about like 23 and a half centimeters and i'm happy with this length so i'm just gonna go ahead and cut my yarn but i'm not gonna fasten off again like i'm just gonna take my hook out and then i'll set this aside because it's easier to attach the chain to the other side while you still have a working loop because then you can just crochet it in rather than having to sew it so yeah this is the body of our frog done so i'm just gonna go ahead and set this aside so that we can get started on the little head of the frog 
To get started with the head, you're again gonna go ahead and make a magic circle. But this time, instead of putting six, we're only gonna put five single crochets into the circle. So again, as I've showed you before, go into the circle, grab a loop, yarn over, that's one single crochet. So two, three, four, and five. So just grab this tail and pull it tight, and then take your stitch marker and mark the end of this row. And this is, and this is row one for the head. So now again, as before, we're gonna be doing increases all around for the next round. And then just make a single crochet and then go back into that same loop and make an increase. So previous round, we had five stitches. So by the end of this round, we're gonna have 10 stitches. So again, just continue doing increases all around and then I'll meet you at the end of the row. Again, the last stitch of the row, take out your stitch marker and then do your increase. And put the stitch marker back on. Now for round three, similar to how we did the base, we're gonna do one single crochet, one increase alternating pattern. And just to show you, next stitch, do a single crochet and then the one after it do an increase and this is a repeating pattern so um, I have the pattern here on the screen so after you finish this round of one single crochet one increase you'll see that you have to do now two single crochets one increase and then for round five three single crochets one increase and then round six four single crochets and one increase i'm going to be doing all of these off camera because i don't want the video to be too long but yeah just follow the pattern that's on the screen here it's not that complex and i have the stitch count at the end of every row so that you can count your stitches as you go to make sure that you're doing it correctly and if you do it correctly then once you reach the stitch marker which is the last stitch of the row it's always going to end on an increase this is the end of round six which is also the last round of increases and also if you guys can hear banging outside they're doing construction so i'm sorry about that but yeah we're done with our increases now and so now we're going to be doing three rounds of just single crochets all around and so that means that for round seven eight and nine we're just going to be doing single crochets into all of the stitches no increases no need to count anything just single crochets for three rows and then after row nine we're done with the head so now we're gonna fasten off and to do that go into the next stitch pull up a loop but then make oops go into the next stitch pull up a loop but then we're gonna make a slip stitch and then we're gonna chain one and then cut the yarn and then pull this super tight and then you can go ahead and just use your hook to weave in this little tail so i'm just gonna set aside the head and the body and we're gonna get started on the eyes so for the eyes you obviously need to make two like these i'm talking about this part so you obviously need to make two and to make them again you're gonna start with a magic circle uh, sometimes when i want my magic circles to be a little bit smaller i just wrap them around one finger like this and it just does the same thing as wrapping it around two fingers so make a magic circle and then place again five single crochets into your magic circle five and then again mark this last stitch right here and pull your magic circle tight we're going to be doing increases again all over for this round so just repeat what we've been doing already for the third and the last row we're just going to be doing single crochets all along so we're now going to fasten off our work and then now you want to leave a long tail because you want to sew it on and 
it's easier if you have a longer tail to work with so i'm just gonna leave like a considerable amount of tail cut my work and pull it tight and this is one of the eyes done so just go ahead and make another one identical to this now we're gonna assemble the frog i'm gonna put the chain between row two and three of the frog so again keeping in mind that i want this to be at the back i'm just gonna try to find like a symmetrical line here so i'm gonna put my chain through here and i just put my hook through the head of the frog from the outside grab this chain and then i kind of just pull it through and then take out the loose end we want to find the stitch that is exactly the opposite of this stitch so between row two and three for me it would be kind of like right here so now i put my hook from inside of the work to the outside grab the rest of the chain and then just pull it through like this fold the body in half so that I can find the stitch that is exactly the opposite to where we started chaining from and that would be this stitch right here so now I grab the loop that we left off when we finished doing the chain and I'll put that on my hook like this and then I pull that loop through that stitch and then I make a little slip stitch and then you can just go ahead and pull this super tight to sew on the eyes I fold my work in half so that I can make sure that I'm working into the same number of stitches on both sides but I kind of just place the eye like exactly where we put the chain through so that's like between row two and three and I'm gonna sew it between three rows so one two three it's difficult to show how to sew it on but i'll try my best and i put the eye where i want it to be and then take my needle and go through the stitches and kind of just sew along the stitches of the head and then the eye of the frog it's really bad at explaining this part so i'll make sure to link a video on how to sew on different parts of amigurumi so that if you're a beginner and don't know how to sew amigurumi, you can have a more concise explanation on how to do this part. I just finished sewing on this first eye right here, and as you can see, it and as you can see, it's sewn along three rows, and that's because I don't want it to spread too much because I want it to be like a little bit more round because if you were to like sew it on more flat then it wouldn't have that effect that i'm looking for did it along three rows and then now i'm gonna go ahead and sew on this other eye as well once you finish sewing on the eyes just grab the extra tails and just go through a couple of these stitches to weave in these tails as well they're not gonna unravel anyways but i just like to make sure that they're extra secure so yeah just do that and then you can just go ahead and cut to crochet on the little limbs i'm going to do the legs between this row so it's row five it's between row five and six of the frog it's right above that row where we crocheted into the back loops so just um, make sure that your project is folded in half so that you can like make them as symmetrical as possible so now that i know like this is like the middle stitch right here so i'm gonna this is row four this is five this is six so between row five and six i'm gonna insert my hook right here and then i'm gonna grab my yarn I like to do this and then I just hold this tail here so that it doesn't get in my way and now I'm gonna chain five so one two three four and five and now I'm gonna do slip stitches along the chain that we just made so 
and the back of these chains you can see these little bumps that's where I like to slip stitch into so just put your hook through those little loops and make slip stitches all along for this just chain one and then cut your yarn pull it through that same stitch where we started making the little limb off of so pull it through like that and then I'm gonna pull all these tails on the inside so that I can tie a knot like once I'm done I'll show you how to do it you flip your work inside out and then you just tie a knot with all these loose ends and then you can just go ahead and cut them so now I'm just gonna repeat exactly this on the other side as well so keeping my work folded I'll know exactly like what stitch to work into and then I'll show you how you can do the upper lip. Just did the lower limbs and now for the upper ones we're gonna count one two three four five six seven so this right here is our seventh seventh row so insert your hook below and on top so that like the seventh row is on your hook and then you just go ahead and do the same thing that we've been doing so you chain five and then you slip stitch into all the chains and then you just fasten up your work also make sure that when you're crocheting your limbs that they're aligned with the other ones so when you keep your work folded in half it's rather easy to find it but just make sure that you're working in one line now that i've done all the limbs i'm gonna flip it inside out like this and then i'm just gonna tie knots between the two strands of yarn and tie it a couple times so that you make sure that it's nice and secure but the first one should always be the tightest so just do that but make sure that it's also not like um, disrupting your work because like you know how sometimes when you tie it too tight it kind of like just pulls inwards I just finished tying all the ends and I put on the chapstick on the inside just to like give it some structure but now I'm just gonna glue on the eyes and uh, if you have safety eyes I'm pretty sure that you would have to like cut the back of the eyes so that they lay flat because there's not much space here but you could also just like embroider them on or crochet like a very small circle and glue them on these are five millimeters like little buttons kind of i got them from like a local stationery store so i don't really have a link or anything for them but yeah they're like nothing that special it's kind of like just like a dot that you have to glue on so i'm just gonna glue these on off camera because i need to focus because i have done such a horrible job gluing these ones so yeah do this off camera and then i'll come back i glued on the eyes and even though i tried to focus they're still a bit crooked but that's fine i'm now gonna grab this like scrap piece of black yarn that i have to sew on the little smile right there so i'm gonna sew it on between row um I think it's like six, yeah, it's between row six and seven. And you just, I do it over one, two, three, four stitches. So just put your yarn through like that. And then come out of the middle right here. And go under this lip that you kind of just sewed on right now and then go back into that same stitch and that's how you crochet on a smile and here at the back I'm just gonna tie a knot For the mushroom and the ice cream, I used a half double crochet stitch 
and if you're a beginner and half double crochet confuses you, you can go ahead and use the same exact pattern as the frog, you just don't need to make the eyes. But generally speaking, I prefer the half double crochet when making these like little lipstick or lighter holders because first of all, it's like a bigger stitch so the project finishes faster. But I also really like the way half double crochet looks, like the stitch itself. So I kind of prefer using half double crochets as opposed to the normal single crochets. But of course, you're welcome to use whatever stitch that you'd like. So I'll have the pattern here on the screen and it's like fairly the same as the frog one except you just replace the single crochets with a half double crochet. But I'm just going to show you very quickly how to like start it. So again, starting with your magic ring. And then... You see at the start of every magic ring you chain one so you're gonna go ahead and chain another one you're gonna be making half double crochets into the magic circle so i don't count these chains as like a stitch i know that in some patterns they do but i i just don't count it as a stitch so right now i'm gonna be making six half double crochets into this magic circle so to do that wrap your yarn around your hook and then go into the circle grab your yarn and now you have three loops on your hook yarn over and pull through all three and that is a half double crochet so again wrap your yarn around your hook into the circle grab a loop three loops on your hook yarn over and pull all three so that's two i'm gonna go ahead and make four more and then i'll meet you back pull the magic circle tight and then go back and find you remember the two chains that we did go find the second chain mine is like right here and then put your hook through the second chain make a slip stitch chain one and then you can start your second row it's gonna be half double crochet increases so Again, as I've said, I don't count this chain as a stitch. So I'm going to find the next place where I can put my hook into. And for me, it's that little gap right there. That is my first stitch. So I'm just going to put two half double crochets in there as an increase. Follow the pattern that is on the screen with the stitch counts. And then very quickly, you'll have the body of the mushroom. And then for the cap again, I'll have the pattern on the screen. And then the assembly is the exact same as the frog. So now I'm going to be showing you how you make these like little scalloped edges for the ice cream one. I just finished this last row. So let's say that I finished making like the ice cream portion of it. So this is what I'm going to be left with. I'm not going to fasten off. Instead, I'm going to chain two and then go into the next stitch and make a slip stitch. And then again, chain two, go into the next stitch and make a slip stitch chain two into the next stitch make a slip stitch once you start doing this all around you'll see that these little edges will start forming and it kind of looks like when you place like an ice cream scoop into a cone so yeah it's the pattern for the ice cream portion of it and then the body is the exact same as the mushroom and then for the sprinkles and the little spots on the mushroom i just used my embroidery needle and like a scrap piece of yarn and I just made the spots like by going into random stitches and as you can see some of them are thicker some of them are thinner because for some of them I use like two strands and for some of them I use just one so yeah there's like a lot of variety of how you could do these especially with the ice cream we could use like different colored sprinkles you can be very creative with how you would like to make these little holders this was it for today's video once again if you make these please make sure that you tag me these are my socials so yeah thank you guys so much for watching and i'll see you next time bye